Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jim Delaman. I am the community architect for Group Travel. What? I'm I'm not Jim Delaman. Oh, right. Hi, I'm Corey Vries. I'm the director of Group Travel Odyssey. Jim Delaman is out today, so I get to be your host for today's Coach and Go. I'm super excited. Um, it's my first one, so I hope everybody is really patient with me as I try to navigate through this. But first, I know what to do first. The first thing is I need you to go to YouTube. I need you to hit the subscribe button on YouTube. Ring that little bell. I need you to go to Facebook and like us there. And I need you to connect with us on LinkedIn. Do them all or any, anything that gets us the notification that you're watching and um, enjoying our content. Um, so without further ado, today we're going to be talking about helpful reports to create and use in group accounting. Now, group accounting is a super powerful tool, powerful tool for you, and we have, but we also know there's a lot of information there. So how do you organize it? How do you create reports that tell you the things that you want to know? Don't ask me. So we brought on Christina Lewis to help us through that. Hey, Christina. Oh, am I on yet? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you got to tap the microphone. Am, am I on yet? Am I on yet? <laughs> <laughs> I'm here and happy to talk about group accounting today. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. So you're going to be talking about some reports and creating those reports and what you can show and things of that nature. Yeah, absolutely. So group accounting is one of those applications we get a lot of questions about um, and kind of not connected people want to do things that group accounting can do for them and just i think they don't realize that that's a tool that we have available um, and that they can create these reports for their accounting departments so that's kind of what we're showing today is some of the possibilities that you can do with group accounting awesome take it away all right i'm gonna jump right in Okay, so I am going to start today. I'm going to go through a couple different things here. We're starting today on a sample dashboard. So we did a couple weeks ago do a coach and go on reports in dashboards. So check those out if you haven't um, to talk about the different options for your dashboard. But this is the one that's your default when you have um, when you're set up in group accounting. So the things I wanted to show you today are what these buttons go to. These buttons go to in reports that often people, like I said, ask us for content that actually is already there. And I think that maybe you just don't realize. So this first one, group payments reconciliation. Corey, let me know if my screen doesn't switch. All right. So it's group payments good. reconciliation. Perfect. And uh, this report is going to show us its intention is to show us everything that has been paid. Now, if you've been in group accounting, you have a lot of trips in here. You've been recording a lot of payments. So, again, these are payments that you have received. So those of you from those accounting departments, think of this as your AR report, right? So this is, um, well, the received AR report rather than the outstanding AR report. So this one is going to show you everything received and you can filter it down to what you need to filter it down to. So let's say you want to filter out just the ones received in October of 2023. So what we can do here is use this date received filter. And I wanna say by month, and we're gonna say that would be last month. And there you go. So now what you can do, if you need to have a copy of this, you can go over here and you can download the report as a CSV. And again, you can send that to your accounting departments or accounting departments. You can go ahead and download that yourself. Um, and it really is just going to show you then a total of how much you had received in the month of October. A good way to compare also to your, let's say, your bank statements um, when you have those checks or maybe a credit card statement um, if somehow it came through there. However, you're collecting payments. All right, and the next report is product payments reconciliation. So this one is basically the reverse. So we're talking about your payables. So this is going to be things that have come in to, um, that you have made to the suppliers, payments made outside. So ultimately, this is going to be everything that you have paid out, every trip, and every supplier. So again, if you have a lot in here, you might have quite a long list, but don't forget about these filters. They are so helpful for you. You can use them on any report, um, but it is a great way to get the information you want. 
So if you don't have a filter up here that you like, you can go ahead and click this little funnel just as a reminder. And then the, now you can filter by any of these columns. So let's say I want to filter by a specific supplier. Let's see if I can find one that's got a few. This Go Rio. So if I want to find out how much I pay to this Go Rio Cruises, now I have that report here and I can have that. Otherwise, I'm just going to go ahead and take that filter off. Maybe I want to do the same thing like on the group payments. I want to know everything paid last month. Let's see if I have anything last month. Perfect. Okay, so now you can see, and it's all, of course, from one um, trip here, and that's just because this is our testing environment, but you will have everything that you paid in the month of October. So same thing like that other one. It's great for if you want to download this for your month end reports, compare it to your statements, etc. And also be aware of the general ledger code. So when you're entering in your product payable, and this was the same thing on that receivable, you can enter a general ledger code. Now to show you that real quick, I'm gonna jump on over. I can get the right tab, here we go. Jump on over to here and just show you where that is located. So I am on a sample trip. And if I go to my deposit here, let's say I'm gonna record a payment. So I'm gonna go edit. Under my payment received section, you will have this field called general ledger code. Now, this is something that I know a lot of you in accounting use um, to categorize your expenses. And now you can put that in when you are entering in your payment received from the customer or also the payment made to the supplier. So on the other end, if you are recording a payment made to a supplier, so I'm gonna cancel out of here. And we're gonna go to products. And let's just say we're gonna make a payment to this hotel. And you can see it's right here as well. So that is where you're recording that general ledger code. Um, so that way you can also filter those reports by that code, uh, making it a lot easier when you're comparing and doing your month end reconciliations. So I know we have received a lot of people asking about that. How do I compare to my accounting system? Um, this is a great way to do that. These reports that I'm showing you where you can um, sort by the month paid. You can also sort by your general ledger code. You can also sort by a payment reference number. So those are all different things that you can do to generate those reports to compare to your accounting software. So important thing to mention there. So when you're accounting software, again, I know you have a lot of questions about that. So great place to go is group accounting to make your comparisons. Okay. Then the next one is supplier payment summary. So this is again that third button on your default home page. And this is kind of meant to be, as it says in parentheses, your payment remittance. So I'm just gonna go and I picked something before the show here. So I'm gonna go do anything. All right, so I went ahead and just pulled up whatever was um, a blank payment reference number, just so I had something to show you. Again, this is the testing environment. But the intention here is that when you are filtering that report, you can pick a supplier. I picked anything, but you can pick, let's say, Adler Planetarium. And if I had a payment reference in here of one, two, three, four, then now when I download this report, it's a very handy tool of something you can email to this supplier and tell them, hey, these are all the things I am paying for with my check. So again, if you are making those large payments, especially when you have a lot of trips traveling at once, maybe you're making one big check to that supplier, this is a way to have that payment remittance um, to show the supplier everything that's covered. Okay. And now I'm gonna show you a couple possibilities. Again, if you are curious about our different reports, I encourage you to check out the Coach and Go we did about reports and dashboards and things that you can do. There's a lot of possibilities. And if you do have questions, please put it at a help desk with what you're looking to achieve and we'd be happy to work with you on it. 
but just some ideas of things that might be helpful to you. First, um, this one is on a couple dashboards of trip status. It's a basic pie chart showing you contracting trips versus booking. But I pulled this up for the idea that you could also have a pie chart of your tour consultants. Uh, maybe you want to show the amount of profit and tour consultants that are a part of that profit. So some different things like that. Maybe you want to show all of your trips and the pie chart of destinations. So you can have a really nice visual of how many of your trips are going certain places. And then we're going to swing on over to this final tab. And this idea came courtesy of one of our companies. And it is a report of things by division. So this is something that we really would encourage more people to use. Um, and currently it's not used as much, but I want to talk about it today. And that is the division that you can put on your trip in Sales Manager. So quick jumping over to my Sales Manager trip to show you this division name field. So if you do not have division set up already, please put in a help desk. And what these are, are things in your company that, how you divide it out. So what you can see here on our testing environment for division, you can see we just have some generic East Coast, West Coast, other international. You might have, um, you know, something like that where it's an area of the country, area of the world. Um, you might have maybe a different office team in a different state that you want to track that, whatever kind of tracking you want to do. So this was put in as a way for you to be able to generate reports, especially in group accounting, of how each of those divisions is doing. So in group accounting, when you have that trip all laid out, you have all your expenses entered and all your payments received, you get a profit and loss. So once you have um, that entered in, you can then see the profit by division. So a very helpful tool if you are having those divisions in your company. So to quick jump right on over here just now that I explained that. So back to this summary. So again, these are just um, our testing trips. So we don't have a ton that are marked by division, but I put them in there so you could see. Once we had details entered in, it would show it would not show zero. It's only showing zero right now because they're again test trips and they don't have um, all of the payments entered in. But if you do, you would have that total of your profit and loss by the division. We could also do this by tour consultant or by destination. There's a lot of possibilities here. So if you're looking to have more meat to the data that you have in group accounting, this is a great way to do it. And that is the examples that I have for today. Ooh, outstanding. Um, yeah, it's great to know that when you're inputting a lot of this stuff in, you're also aggregating that data into, into packets that you can use for your total company, right? I mean, that's kind of Absolutely. the whole purpose is you don't have mm -hmm. to go back and add a bunch of spreadsheets together. Um, real quick, uh, when when we're thinking about um, reports, I'm correct that we can also have like calendar reports where you can have mm -hmm. like, if you can show what you need to pay on specific days if you if you prefer to do it that way, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. And let me jump right back into my sharing. I had one here. Um, so that is a good segue. I did forget to show that. On the home screen at the very bottom here, you will see an example on your default, again, dashboard that is in group accounting, where this is a product calendar of due dates. So like Corey, you were mentioning, this is a way to display anything with a date. So things like those due dates for your product payables or due dates for what your receivables of people trying to pay you, your customers. Um, you can put it on a report like this with the calendar. Um, again, just to repeat, it's something that with a date, of course, that's what we would need to have. Um, but if you are looking to have a display of this sort, we can absolutely do a calendar as well. And the very nice thing is you can even drag around the date here 
and change it. So that is something that can be very helpful when you're dealing with things like tasks as well. You can change the date if you didn't get something completed that day. So yes, thank you for that reminder. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I was I was thinking as you were doing it, um, a lot of people get a little tired of inputting those contract dates in, right? They get another contract, they got to input the dates in. But the rewards for putting those dates in is you don't miss anything because it ends up on a calendar that way if you've um, when it's on that calendar report. Um, so it could potentially save you thousands of dollars or, you know, a, a bad trip or, you know, something like that by making sure everything gets paid in a timely manner. It's supposed to, you know, to help you. Um, I specifically also liked the, the report where you can categorize your payments by company to send one large check. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know that a lot of people, uh, a lot of companies do that as opposed to pay as they go. They pay, you know, large, a lot of trips at one time for companies. Um, and I think that, you know, for the vendors, and I think that's that's great and, and, a, and a useful tool to have. Um, so I, I think that's really cool. And if you want help in creating reports or in using these things, then that's what you want to do is you want to actually reach out to help. Help at um, gtonetwork.com. Um and put help in the subject line and we'll reach back out to you. It could be something as simple as I'd like some help building a report to do this, right? Um, mm -hmm. Every member company has a certain number of reports that will help them build. And then, um, you know, unlimited numbers after that, if they'd like to, you know, um, pay a little money to get us um, uh, on board for that. But uh, everybody's got a few custom, custom designed, um, reports. And so you want to make sure that you use them. And this is a great place to take care of that. Um, mm -hmm. So excellent, excellent. Anything else for us, Christina, on this topic? That's it today. Yeah. So absolutely. Just repeating what you said. Help desk is great. And you know, we're actually since our last coach and go on reports, we've been getting some more help desk about creating reports, which is excellent. So I hope today gives those um, accounting people in the office and also our administrators and ideas of one of the things that you can do. Um, you already have the information, might as well use it. So absolutely excited about maybe helping people out there. <laughs> Outstanding. Well, great. Um, I want to remind everybody that coach and goes are every other Tuesday at 2 p.m. So we've got this one we're going to see you back in two weeks. Next week is a fast break. If you aren't watching the fast breaks, please make sure you check them out. You're asking yourself, how do I check out a fast break? Go to our community forum. They are all listed right there for you to do um, with all some great topics. Just short. They're just short five-minute videos um, that really help out in, in minor things. Um, please check them out as well. Um, other than that, Christina, I think we'll sign off. Um, go to grouptravelodyssey.com for any other information. And otherwise, we're going to see you back in two weeks. All right. See you then. <laughs> All right. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank you for watching this episode of GTO Coach & Go. We invite you to stay connected with Group Travel Odyssey on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. And be sure to check out more of our media, including Destination Dispatch and the Destinations Beyond Expectations podcast. Please visit our website, grouptravelodyssey.com, where you can learn more about GTO and request a demo. Group Travel Odyssey, business without boundaries.